Welcome back, beautiful Tri-State area. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Welcome back to the We Play It Forward series, the one that uplifts bold solutions and breakthroughs in the fight against Alzheimer's, brought to you by the We Play It Forward Foundation, where community, passion, and research collide to move us one step closer to a cure. Scientists at UCSF and the Gladstone Institutes have discovered that two already FDA-approved cancer drugs, letrozole and ironotican, can actually reverse Alzheimer's disease in mice, including restoring lost memory. Yes, you heard that right. Restored memory, not just slowed decline. Now, this is a powerful departure from what we've come to expect in a disease where 99% of drug trials have failed and current treatments only delay the inevitable. But joining us today is someone who has dedicated over over 25 years to one of the most overlooked yet critical molecular pathways in Alzheimer's disease, nitric oxide. Dr. Nathan Bryan earned his PhD from LSU Health Shreveport and conducted his postdoctoral fellowship at Boston University's Whitaker Cardiovascular Institute before joining faculty at the University of Texas Health Science Center at Houston under Nobel laureate Farid Murad. Now he's the founder and CEO of Brian Therapeutics, which is a clinical stage biotech company advancing nitric oxide based therapies in heart disease, chronic wounds, and now Alzheimer's. His work has shaped the molecular framework through which we understand vascular dementia and neurodegeneration. Today, we're going to be chatting how nitric oxide meets repurposed cancer drugs. And are we finally reversing Alzheimer's? Let's break down the science, the hope and the urgency. Welcome to the show, Superstar. Zen, great to be with you. Thanks for having me. So excited. So let's start with the news that has everyone buzzing. This UCSF Gladstone study looked at nearly 1,300 FDA-approved drugs and found a surprising duo, the letrozole and ironotican, that didn't just slow Alzheimer's progression in mice, but actually reversed it. So I had to read that twice. Even memory was restored. We don't often hear the words reversal and Alzheimer's together, and yet here we are. So from your scientific perspective how significant is this breakthrough and what does it tell us about the future of alzheimer's therapy well i think as you mentioned we have to put it in the proper perspective and this study was done in mice that are genetically engineered to develop symptoms of alzheimer's and so again these are old repurposed drugs that are targeted toward anti-cancer so these are what we call aromatase inhibitors and type type isomerase inhibitor dna isomerase inhibitors so i don't think this is a big step forward because, again, these are in mice, and honestly, we've cured every human disease in mice uh, that we know of. The problem is the translation of that science in the real human medicine and clinical trials. But because Alzheimer's is not caused from an overexpression of aromatase enzyme or some type of cellular replication, I don't believe these drugs are going to have any clinical utility at reversing Alzheimer's. Mice are not humans. I mean, and, and again, we have, we have to understand the totality of the disease and the environmental factors, the genetic predispositions, the vascular metabolic a- aspects of an individual that may be predisposing them to rapid onset of Alzheimer's. And once we understand that, then and only then can we, can we develop rational therapies that are not only safe, but effective and address the root cause. Wow, that's a bold that's a bold take on breakthrough headliners, and I love the, the transparency, and I like that you tied it back to science. So where do you see nitric oxide fitting into this conversation? I mean, could it act synergistically with repurposed drugs then to enhance their impact or even potentially serve as its own neurovascular therapy? We've tried to do is understand the root cause. Today, we understand that Alzheimer's and dementia is a vascular uh, disease, and it's a metabolic disease. So whether we look at this through cerebral blood flow, through spec scans, or we look at the, you know, what's been called diabetes type 3, it's insulin resistance in the brain. It's a lack of the ability to, for the cells to bring in glucose. And nitric oxide dilates the blood vessels, perfuses the brains, improves glucose uptake. When you deliver oxygen and nutrients to the cells and you uh, maintain the normal function, you don't get misfolding of proteins, you don't get the amyloid plaque, and you don't get the tau tangles. So nitric oxide addresses root cause of dementia and Alzheimer's. Lates when would vessels. one start implementing nitric oxide into their supplement? Well, I think it's it's important for everybody to, you know, I've got young kids that are high mm. school athletes and middle school athletes that utilize our consumer products of nitric oxide. But I think, you know, there's only two people in the world who need nitric oxide, and that's the people who are healthy and don't want to get sick 
There's the people who are sick and want to get healthy. I love that. Because we know that it, it's controlling <laughs> every aspect of vascular biology and metabolic disease and inflammation, oxidative stress, and immune dysfunction that we see in Okay, you sold me. Disease. I'm going to your website. <laughs> now, right. one fascinating aspect of this study, which you could debunk, was the method. So researchers used big data, gene expression maps, AI p- p- patterning, and real-world patient data to find these two drugs. They even noticed that patients who had taken letrozole or Ironotican for cancer had lower rates of Alzheimer's later in life. So what do you think about that? What do you think this data-driven repurposing first model um, is how, do you think it's how we'll crack neurodegeneration or, or, or how might nitric oxide research benefit from the same AI-enhanced discovery approach, if not? Well, I think AI is extremely important because it can crunch so much data. But again, genes respond to the environment. And unless you're born with an inborn air metabolism, a genetic defect, then, you know, Alzheimer's isn't caused by some genetic disorder. So when we look at the associations of, of, you know, certain genes or proteins and then looking at drugs that may affect that, again, we're not addressing root cause. And the other thing we have to consider are the side effects of these drugs. I mean, these are really toxic drugs with a laundry list of side effects. So for me, coming, you know, being in basic science for 25 years now in the clinical translation of that science, it's always risk-benefit. What clinical benefit does it provide and at what risk? And if there's little benefit and it's all risk, then that's an easy quotient. Uh, it's not a good drug target and it's not a good drug. If there's little risk and enormous benefit, which is how we're seeing our nitric oxide translate into clinical medicine, then it's a no-brainer. But I think we have to, there's enormous data out there. There's a lot of misinformation. What we try to do is take the information and implement, implement that into real knowledge based on science so that we understand mechanisms of the onset and progression of disease to where we can develop rational therapies to not only slow the progression, but to reverse, regress, and even prevent the disease. And according to um, Alzheimer's Disease International, over 55 million people worldwide are living with dementia, and someone is diagnosed every three seconds. I mean, the numbers are staggering. And the costs, I mean, financial and emotional, are staggering, right? And despite enormous R&D investment, the 99.6% failure rate of Alzheimer's drug trials remains a cautionary tale. Now, with your deep experience in these clinical dry, in these clinical trials and drug development, what are the biggest obstacles between this kind of mouse model breakthrough and actual FDA-approved treatment for humans? Well, it's, it's time and money. I mean, just like anything else. On average, it takes about 10 years or 8 to 10 years and about $800 million to get a drug to market. Uh, and that's going from kind of understanding or discovery of basic mechanism into drug therapy, clinical trials, and FDA approval. So cost is the major hurdle in the development of getting this uh, in there. But going back to your your issue of all major, you know, drugs toward Alzheimer's have failed, it's because all target drug targets or drug therapies are targeted towards the amyloid plaque and the tau tangles. Those are the consequence of the disease. They're not causing the disease. So to me, it's very simple. These drugs in all modalities and all treatment and therapeutic strategies targeted toward the, am- toward the amyloid plaque and the tau protein won't work because they can't work because it's not causing the disease. It's a con- consequence of disease. And nine out of 10 Americans are metabolically unfit. You know, most people have for- poor vascular function. Cardiovascular disease remains the number one killer of men and women worldwide. And when you combine the uh, vascular dysfunction with the metabolic dysfunction, there's your roadmap for Alzheimer's. So if we can address the vascular aspects of dementia and Alzheimer's and improve insulin sensitivity, glucose uptake, and correct the metabolic phenotypes and vascular phenotypes of Alzheimer's, you completely arrest the disease. So we often talk about Alzheimer's as a disease of the mind, but after hearing you speak, it's just as much a disease of the blood vessels. So vascular dementia, oxidative stress, um, endothelial dysfunction, it's all connected is what I'm hearing. Absolutely. And nitric oxide sits at the intersection of many of these pathways. So I'm starting to learn a lot from this interview. So in your view, could targeting vascular health, obviously, I, you're going to tell me yes, but simply through nitric oxide modulation help slow or prevent neurodegeneration before it even starts? I mean, is this in fact accurate? And should this be part of a public health messaging at this point. No, absolutely. Look, and we know this from, if you look at long-term epidemiological studies, you know, people with diabetes have faster onset of 
Alzheimer's uh, and that predisposes them. And so when we look at the vascular and the metabolic aspects of Alzheimer's, because you got to look at the progression of disease, we first call it mild cognitive impairment. And then we call it vascular dementia. Why vascular dementia? Because if you're looking at spec scans and imaging of the brain or functional MRI looking at blood flow, there's hypoperfusion of the brain. The brain is not getting adequate blood supply and oxygen. And when the cells, when the cells don't get oxygen, they can't function. Proteins become misfolded, and we call that amyloid plaque and tau tangles. So if we can maintain adequate perfusion of the brain, if we can maintain insulin sensitivity and glucose uptake, then those cells can do their job, they function, and we can maintain normal cognitive function. Uh, and it, it's a vascular metabolic disease, and, and nitric oxide addresses both aspects of that. That's the message we need more people to hear, that brain health starts with blood flow, and nitric oxide might just be one of the most important and most overlooked molecules in that equation from what I'm hearing. Now, we know that even the most promising scientific breakthroughs can take years to reach patients. Meanwhile, caregivers and families and advocacy organizations are fighting this disease every single day. And foundations like We Played Forward are trying to bridge the gap by funding research, supporting patients and providing that hope. So what role can philanthropy and grassroots awareness type of campaigns play in accelerating progress, Dr. Brian? And what advice would you give to everyday people who want to help move the needle? Well, number one, I, I encourage everyone to get educated and informed on the importance of nitric oxide. You know, there are things that we do that are inhibiting the natural production. Fluoride, for example, antiseptic mouthwash, uh, antacids, all of these rapidly decline the natural production of nitric oxide and, and accelerate the disease. But look, most basic science and even clinical translational funding comes from the National Institutes of Health. And, you know, that's dependent upon the budget from each administration. And so these philanthropic activities, you know, that fund money from private donors, from, from, from philanthropists, you know, are key to advancing the science, not just the basic science, but translating that into clinical medicine is absolutely essential. So well said. I mean, science can't move forward without support. I mean, this is a movement that requires both molecular innovation and moral urgency, if you will. And every listener and viewer can be part of that. It's such a simple thing. Well, we are officially out of time. Dr. Brian, thank you for, for, for lending your voice and your decades of research to this incredibly important conversation. And the possibility of memory restoration is no longer just science fiction. It's slowly, slowly science unfolding, if you will. And, of course, I, I, it was such a pleasure learning from you today. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on. This has been the We Play It Forward segment where science meets soul and where every memory matters. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. You could head to briantherapeutics.com and you could definitely check him out on the ground. He's very active and he does respond to your comments at Dr. Nathan S. Brian. That's Brian with a Y and at We Play It Forward Foundation. We'll be right back after this. A Moment of Zen is brought to you by the We Play It Forward Foundation. Tee off and give back at their annual golf outing August 21st at the Mutton Town Club to fuel hope in the fight against Alzheimer's. Enjoy 18 holes, food and drink, a silent auction, raffles and more. Head to WePlayItForwardFoundation.org to learn more. Register and donate.